Hello, it's Anne Murphy here from Domus Blicity. How are you today? Just popping in to share a recipe with you today. And this is my go-to cake recipe. Now, I've heard it called a crazy cake, a depression cake, um, a, I think war cake, um, a fudge cake. Um, but it's my go-to recipe every single time I want to make a cake. And that could be... Um, a round cake, a bar cake, cupcakes, um, any kind of cake, every type of birthday celebration cake I've ever made is using this recipe. So I've used it for years and years and years. So it's the best cake recipe to make with just basic pantry staples. So you don't need butter, you don't need eggs, and you don't need milk like you would for a normal cake recipe. And it produces the most amazing results. And you can add whatever flavorings you want to it so it's really good for using up all those um, bits and pieces now today I've decided to make what's called I'm calling it a cherry ripe cake so it's based on um, an Australian chocolate bar called a cherry ripe which is uh, cherries and coconut covered in chocolate so it's going to be a chocolate cake with uh, morello cherries that I needed to use up. Um, that's what, what prompted me to make this. I have oranges in the um, fridge, so I could have made a choc orange cake, or um, that combination is known as Jaffa here in Australia. I could have made a plain orange cake, orange and coconut. I have apples. I could have made apple cake, apple cinnamon tea cake. Um, what else do I have? I could have just made a plain chocolate cake. Uh, with the cherries, I could have made a black forest cake, um, which I that's I normally have these in the pantry, and when I open them, I normally use them for baking. So they've been used for um, a black forest cake already, and now they just needed using up. So for the um, presentation today, I decided to do something different and call it a cherry ripe cake. So there's probably about half a jar left. So all I've done um, to those cherries is um, chop them up roughly. And because the liquid that this recipe uses is one cup of water, depending on the flavoured cake that you make, you just make up the liquid to um, one cup. So I did manage to um, get one cup of um, liquid out of the jar of cherries. So I'm going to use that as my one cup of water. But if you were making an orange cake and you had um, orange juice, you could use uh, one cup of orange juice. Um, oh, I just can't think off the top of my head. You know, if you were making an apple cake, you could use one cup of apple juice. Or if you had a little bit left in the fridge of apple juice or orange juice, and it only came to um, a third of a cup you could add um, water to make up one cup of the liquid. So that's why it's just whatever you've got laying around, whatever needs using up in the fridge, that's what you can, um, that's why this is such a good cake. So I've already got the dry ingredients in a bowl. I'll just um, move the um, camera down. So in here, because this is a chocolate cake, I've added the cocoa, but normally it's just one and a half cups of flour and it doesn't stipulate what flour it is, but I use both um, plain and self-raising or self-raising flour. So it doesn't matter because you are adding a raising agent of um, bicarb soda. That's the raising agent in it. That's why you don't need eggs and it reacts with uh, white vinegar. And um, this is just my regular white vinegar bottle that I use for cleaning. I always make sure I've got vinegar in the house for cleaning and cake making. So one and a half cups of self-raising flour but you can use plain and you can use wholemeal, you can use any gluten-free flours, coconut flour, um, anything like that. Three tablespoons of cocoa. Um, the recipe, original recipe states one cup of sugar but I've only ever make it with um, half a cup of sugar, it turns out fine. One cup of water, like I said, use whatever liquid that you can that needs using up and also will flavour the cake. 
a teaspoon of vanilla. Now I can't find my vanilla, so I'm going to leave that out. Uh, one tablespoon of white vinegar. Six tablespoons of oil. I hope I have enough. That's the only oil that I've got left. Um, it's olive oil, so you can use whatever oil you have. Um, one teaspoon of baking soda and half a teaspoon of salt. So for the cherry ripe cake today, I've got flour in here, cocoa, and then the last little bit that was in the um, coconut um, packet to um, add the coconut flavour. And I don't whisk, I don't sift, sorry, um, any of my dry ingredients. You can see that there's still a few little lumps of um, cocoa in there. I could have sifted that if I want to, but you know, you can have a cake made in 30 minutes with this recipe, so I don't, it's just, you know, bung it all in, put it in a baking pan and um, bake it. I don't um, sift, I'm just quick and get it done. Um, make sure that's well combined. If you're adding any fruit um, to your cake recipe, I would add it now, and that will help um, keep the fruit centered throughout the um, cake when baking so it won't all um, fall to the bottom so that's my chopped cherries and I'll make sure that they're all coated with the flour mixture without the coconut this would be the exact same way I would make a black forest cake but you know what it's like when you're making a black forest cake you want to have have it topped with ganache and filled with fresh cream and and I'd probably put the cherries um, inside, um, sandwiched in between the cake and not inside the cake mixture, or sometimes I've done both. So that's well mixed in now, and, and like I said, I don't um, use any fancy equipment. This is my Nana's wire whisk. You don't need to have mixed this cake in a um, mix master. It's all done by hand. So the next thing I'll do is um, add the liquid, that just goes into the center, add all the liquid at the same time. I'll add the oil now, six tablespoons of oil. It's really good this recipe too because you don't need a lot of utensils like I said just using this wire whisk, but you only need um, a cup or a half cup measure, I use a half cup measure. So. Um, three half cups of flour and then the half a cup of sugar and if you're using this to measure the um, liquid that's really all you need a tablespoon measure and then a teaspoon for the bicarb so I'll um, count six tablespoons of oil one two three four five Six, and then one tablespoon of vinegar, and then one teaspoon of bicarb of soda. Now this is um, something that I will pass through a sieve because it can be a bit lumpy and you don't want to get lumps of bicarb soda in your um, cake because um, it will, um, you can taste it if there's still a lump in there. So if you can see, once it hits the um, vinegar it will start to foam. I'll just pass that, pass that through this little mini sieve. then it's just a matter of combining all of that you can see it sort of bubbling and um, doing its thing that's where all the um, action happens with the reaction from the vinegar and the bicarb soda so you don't need eggs as the raising agent it might seem a little bit um, liquid to you the cake mix but trust me it comes out perfect every single time. I've never had a failure. I've even forgotten 
I think I had a t open tin of fruit salad, canned fruit salad, in the fridge once, and I thought I'll make like a fruit, um, summer type fruit cake, and I forgot to put the sugar in, and lucky the um, natural sweetness from the fruit um, sweetened the cake, and it was lovely. It was absolutely lovely. Oh, it also says to add half a teaspoon of salt too, so I'll just use that half teaspoon measure. Should have added that at the beginning, but that's neither here nor there. And the vanilla, but I can't find the vanilla, but it'll be fine without the vanilla. Now, what I do when I'm baking um, cakes for the family is I use a slice pan because... Um, it gets, you know, I can get probably 24 pieces of cake out of um, a slice pan. It lasts longer. It, um, everyone gets a piece. It's easy to cut, cut in strips, like in little slices. So if I'm baking just a cake for lunches and afternoon teas, I always use um, a slice pan. So I'll just get the spatula to get all this out same recipe no matter like I can make probably 24 cupcakes or um, 12 large ones a couple of bar cakes I should have showed you um, how I line the tin with baking paper too um, so that it doesn't scrunch up in the corners and that's by cutting out um, a little square at each corner so that it um, doesn't scrunch up but I sometimes don't do that and scrunched up in the corners but it still gets eaten so um, that's good so that's it that will go into my 170 degree oven Celsius or about 375 degree Fahrenheit um, for about 20 minutes I'll check it after 20 minutes just be careful when you're baking it especially if you're doing um, round tins that it does bake in the center uh, so I'll come back in a minute once this is cooked and we'll ice it and um, and I'll show you it. it's a very very moist delicious cake and you can see how easy that was and it's just so great for using up all those um, little bits and pieces and you've got a delicious cake at the end of it. So I'll be back soon. Hello, it's Anne here back again. Just to show you the finished cake. It's baked and uh, ready to be iced. So I'll just turn the camera down. I've just made a very simple chocolate icing or chocolate frosting. Just with icing sugar, uh, a butter blend and some cocoa powder. So um, I'll just turn this camera down to show you the cake. Just trying to get it the right angle. Not sure why. Just move the camera back a little bit more. Hopefully you can see that. Oh, there we go. So um, that's the slab cake or the cake baked in the um, slice pan. And it's the same quantity of mixture for, um, like I said, a, a round, round um, pan or cupcakes, uh, mini cupcakes, bar tins, loaf tins, anything like that. So... Um, this is the uh, chocolate frosting, chocolate icing. Just all made by hand, just whipping it up. Nothing fancy. I'm just icing that simply. I probably won't um, worry about putting anything on top. I could sprinkle some coconut on top 
because it's a cherry coconut cake um, but I probably won't that icing will firm up once this cake is in the fridge try and get it to the edge as much as possible And that's it. I'll lick that later. And I'll just cut a piece to show you um, the texture inside. So you can cut it in um, thin slices. Like I cut these into three. So instead of um, having a big triangle piece of cake uh, you know this is a perfectly acceptable size and look at that um, gorgeous soft fudgy cake all the cherries are evenly dispersed and I'm not going to eat it on camera but I will um, enjoy a piece with my lunch and that's just the perfect little size these are great um, a great size cake to bake for um, a party if you're uh, entertaining a lot of people um, and want everyone to have a little bit of cake but that's my um, no fuss cake recipe this is a chocolate cherry cake or a cherry ripe cake based on the Aussie um, chocolate bar and like I said previously in the video you can use whatever you like you can make it plain vanilla strawberry blueberry I've made carrot carrot cake hummingbird cake every single cake can be converted to this using this recipe and you don't need eggs and you don't need butter and you don't need milk so good for gluten-free cheap and can you can make it all the time with just those pantry staples so i hope you've enjoyed um, this recipe you can find the uh, link to my recipe at the bottom of this video and follow me for more recipes to come thank you